Thanks for watching Film Buff, really, honestly. It's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> <laughs>
Mercy. 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 Oh, how I've waited for you, my friend. Did you hear about the latest exploits of Ragnar? No. He and a great army attacked Paris. Ragnar pretended to be dead and was carried into the city only to jump out of his coffin and open the gates for his warriors. <laughs> That's so ridiculous it must be true. Aethorf. Aethorf. Yes. Come to me. I can jump in. He's gonna cut Floki loose. Mercy. Oh man, Bjorn Ironside, a uh, big episode, man, massive episode for Bjorn. Um, you know, he he really wanted to get out there and you know test himself, and yeah, man, he he got tested this episode. Uh, it goes up against a bear. There is this looming danger of um uh, this berserker who's after him, and Bjorn doesn't even know about this. So you know that's gonna happen probably in the next few episodes. Um. But yeah, man, Baron is out there, man. He's handling, you know, he's handling it. He's doing all right, man. After all, he is Ragnar Lothbrok's uh, son, right? So, you know, and Baron has become, uh, over season three, you know, over the span of season three, he became one of my new favorite characters alongside uh, Floki, Athelstan, and Ragnar. Um, to be honest, I love, like, most of the characters on the show. You know, Rolo, I, I know Rolo's uh, opposing uh, Ragnar at the moment, and, you know, as he does, usually, but... I actually really enjoy Rolo. I like him. Lagatha, of course. You know, love Lagatha. Uh, she's an absolute queen. Even guys like... Um, now, this is crazy. It's season 4, and I still don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. Erlander. Erlander? Um, King Horik's um, son. Um, you know, he basically... He was basically... In the first few seasons, he was a little bitch. <laughs> uh, and a little bitch is just annoying, right? But now, he is a slimy bitch. 
See, now a slimy bitch is annoying, but a slimy bitch can also be interesting. You know, these kind of these kind of characters are needed, right? He's definitely become a little bit more interesting, man. Uh, as I said, you know, he's gone from a little bitch to a slimy bitch. But of course, you know, he's out to get my boy Bjorn Ironside. Um, and another character who um who's kind of iffy, to be honest, um, Kalf. But again, now he's becoming an interesting character as well because I do feel like he. Um, does admire Lagatha and actually does love her. Um, I, I definitely believe that now. But, you know, he's still got a bit of a bit of an asshole side to him, you know, because he's still trying to keep connections. You know, he's he's still trying to keep Erlander. I hope I'm saying that right. He's trying to keep him happy as well. Um, he likes having that, you know, uh, contact. And again, you know, uh, you can see in his face, you know, in the acting that as, um, as uh, Erlander uh, brought up the fact that, you know, Bjorn's out there by himself. This is a good chance to assassinate him. You can see in his face that he, um, he wasn't too sure about this. But, you know, um, of course, it's one of those things that he almost kind of got peer pressured into it. Erlander reminded him that, uh, their goal was to take down the Lothbrook family and the, you know, the dynasty. Uh, and then, you know, Kalf, Kalf's like, okay, yeah, it's a good idea. Maybe we should assassinate him. You know, you can tell that he doesn't quite, um care about that as much anymore um, but he knows that Erlander definitely cares about this and is uh, passionate about getting his uh, revenge for his uh, asshole dad King Horik so you know he's not trying to rock the boat he's trying to keep him happy as well I do feel like sooner or later this partnership is going to fall apart and um, Kalf is going to have to go up against him or something's going to happen but it's not going to last too much longer um but yeah the berserker they got you know this really menacing looking um, a guy, and he, didn't, and he didn't really speak much, he just, you know, made noises, so Bjorn, you know, he wanted to test himself, man, so here it is, man, this this is gonna be the ultimate test, I know he just, uh, killed a bear, but at least he knew that threat is there, you know, he knew about the bear, and he could prepare himself, this, uh, berserker, he has no clue, no clue that this berserker is coming at him, so I believe this is gonna be even a bigger test for Bjorn, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna handle it, man, I'm sure Bjorn Ironside is gonna fuck him up. Uh, he might get his ass whooped a little bit, but, you know, at the end, he's going to come through. Um, but yeah, man, Bjorn. Uh, loving Bjorn, man. I love Bjorn. You know, and his scenes were absolutely beautiful. And I know those scenes were shot in Canada, and, you know, he was really out there. You could tell he's really out there. You know, I kind of regret not starring the show earlier, man, because, you know, I've become a big fan of a lot of these actors. And uh, I know Clive is in Toronto. You know, he films the, the Taken show. So I definitely plan on uh, trying to locate Clive, you know. Go say hi to him, maybe get him on camera if he's down for that. But it's so awesome to know that this show I love so much now has a Canadian connection. You know, the production house is in Toronto, uh, I believe Take 5 Studios. Uh, going back to Kalf, he said he would like to have a kid. And uh, from the looks of it, Lagatha seemed like she, 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 you know, that's something she would consider. Uh, but, uh, you know, she does, she does seem to like him. Uh, let's move on to Rolo, man. Rolo is trying, man. He's trying so hard. Um, you could tell he's uncomfortable doing a lot of these things, but he's trying, you know, he's putting, he's putting in an effort, but again, man, uh, Gisla is not having any of it and he's getting frustrated. You could tell he got really frustrated. He, you know, he, Count Odo is uh, being helpful. I like that Count Odo is being helpful and he's uh, trying to guide him through this. He's like, you know, together, uh, Paris, both of us. But, you know, uh, Rolo asked him that I need to learn this language. Or at least he tried his best to let Odo know. And, and you know, Odo did get it, you know, because <laughs> he's got the drumstick in his hand. And he's, like, banging at the book. Um, so he got lessons. But, again, you know, he was getting frustrated at the lessons. Uh, but I do feel like sooner or later there's going to be a breakthrough. Rolo is probably going to start picking up the language soon. Uh, you know, if you keep at something long enough, you're going to pick it up, right? You know, and sooner or later, Gisla is going to come around and she is going to, perhaps, you know, he's going to impress her. And, you know, that's going to make her come around on this whole uh, situation of being married to this uh, beast of a man she keeps calling him. Let's talk about Judith and Ekbert. Um, you know, so this episode, you know, Judith, uh, actually, over the last few episodes, even, you know, at the end of season three, she's been breaking out of her shell. You know, Judith, I like it. I like to see that. Um, and this episode, she demanded respect, you know, or I believe she, she, she says something like, uh, if anytime you talk to me, uh, talk to me as we're equals, uh, I believe there's something like that. I might be mixing it up a bit, you know, and again, Eckbert being King Eckbert, um, made sure to make her feel like, um, she's getting exactly what she, she wanted. Uh, you know, he's a manipulator, you know, Eckbert's good at this thing. You know, he knows how to manipulate people. He knows how to... Uh, control people you know he does the right things he he says the right things he knows how to you know um get people going he knows how to get people under control and you know once again Aethelwolf man uh he's I, I remember calling him a really dumb person 
uh, not too long ago, but now he's, you know, he's, I'm, kind of, I'm beginning to like him, man. He's a really cool character, actually. You know, here, um, here is another character that is breaking loose and coming out of his shell. And, you know, by the end of it, he was in uh, uh, Queen K's um, bed. You know, that has to do with the fact that they might have connected. You know, he, he took really good care of her and Magnus. Um, um, and there, there might be a connection there. So now that's going on. Uh, and then Judith and um, Queen K. Uh, Judith tells Queen K that indeed it was Athelstan who was her uh, son's um, father. And, you know, she also tells him about uh, what uh, Ragnar has been up to. Um, and, you know, they both got a good laugh out of it. Even King Eckbert got a good laugh out of it. Uh, let's move on to Ragnar. Okay, man. So, um, in terms of Ragnar and Aslog, that's, that, that was done a long time ago, man. You know, and it's clear that both of them can't stand each other now. It's not just, like, on one end. Both of them just can't stand each other anymore. You know, and Ragnar's not gonna let her forget, man. He, he, he brought up, um, Harbert again. He's telling this story to the kids, and... He's, you know, he's giving uh, Aslog those eyes and like he takes a bite out of that fish. So he's holding a grudge. You know, this is uh, this is finished a long time ago. So you know, now I'm just wondering how long it's going to take before they actually just separate or something happens and they, they go their separate, you know, roads. You know, one of the nicest moments, um, you know, it was, a, it, it was a sad moment. It was a happy moment. Um, uh, you know, Ragnar, um, this is right after Bjorn took out the Baron. You know, he lets out that um, scream, you know, that just all that rage. Um, and, you know, it transitions into Ragnar and, uh, and the crow. And, you know, and then there's a shot of young Bjorn running down. And, you know, Ragnar just remembers young Bjorn. And you can see, you know, you can see in that moment he really, really, uh, missed his son. You know, and that uh, image of young Bjorn came to him. And, like, you could tell, you know, he had teary eyes. I really liked him, man. Really cool scene. You know, I just want Bjorn and Ragnar together again, man. Just, like, I hope Bjorn gets back safely or, you know, I hope nothing happens to either one of them. I just want, uh, you know, I love seeing them together. You know, name me a better father-son duo. They're, they're just so awesome together. I love it, man. You know, and, you know, and this brings me to the final thing I'm going to talk about. Athelstan uh, shows himself to Ekbert and Ragnar. Uh, both of them have, you know, uh, a lot of love for Athelstan. Um, so he came to both of them. Um... Stunning. First of all, stunning. Some of these shots were absolutely stunning. You know, that reminds me, this whole season has this amazing look to it, man. I know I keep banging on about this, but like the look is fantastic, man. It's so much more cinematic it, and, you know, that's a color grade. They've changed it up a bit and you could really see it at play in these dark shots, you know, low light shots of Ragnar, you know, he's got the light in his hands. King Akbar going through those little tunnels and he's got the light in his hands. Some really gorgeous lighting and some really gorgeous um, color grade. You know, I absolutely love that scene, that whole scene, man. And it was powerful because, um, and a little bit creepy. I know, you know, um, it wasn't creepy uh, as Ethelson came to Ragnar, but like, uh, it, it gave me a bit of a jolt, you know, as Ethelson was standing right there. He just appeared out of nowhere and Eckbert, you know, just sees him. It gave me a jolt, uh, you know, but so he showed up to, you know, so he showed himself to Eckbert. So Eckbert can be at ease and know that, you know, indeed my dear friend has died and, you know, uh, basically it's for closure. Um, you know, he appeared as this Jesus-like figure, right? And to Ragnar, another beautiful moment, man, because he appeared to Ragnar um, to tell him, you know, tell him to have mercy, mercy on uh, Floki. And he listened to him and he, at the, you know, at the end of the episode, he goes to uh, Floki. Um, and again, man, I know I keep going off on tangents, but amazing acting uh floki um then as he finds out about his daughter being dead um fantastic acting man he's been one of the best actors on the show alongside uh travis had mercy because his dear friend uthelson came to him and he cut floki loose man and you can see at the end even floki was like you know uh, let's see what was that look man? that look was kind of like shock you know and that look of just like astonishment that he's, he's thinking that Ragnar actually, you know, he for, he forgives me, and like you can see in his look, he's just like, whoa, man. And that transitions into that badass epic ending. Bjorn coming out of the water, man, freezing water. You know, as always, super excited to go on to the next episode. Um, all right, guys. So if you enjoyed it, please smash that thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments. Let me know what you guys thought. Hit me up on social media if you're into that, guys. I'm super active on Twitter. Uh, I have an Instagram account. I have a Patreon account. Thank you so much to all the amazing patrons. I thank you so much for your kindness. This is absolutely amazing what you guys are doing for me. Uh, thank you. You know, thank you so much. But thank you so much, guys. Um, I'll see you soon. Take it easy.